this. They say, that's mine. Come on now. Their cousins come over, their friends come over to play, and they grab that toy. And what do they say? They say, mine. So we understand that from the very beginning, in order to be blessed, we have to learn how to be blessed. We have to understand that giving and increase is a learned behavior. Listen, the blessed life doesn't just belong to those who are making a living, but the blessed life belongs to those who are building their life for God. Let me ask you a question. How many of you, since you've been coming to church, you realize you're building your life for God? We want to build a life that glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ, and we understand that we're building our life for God because our life now has a divine and powerful purpose. Have you discovered it? Have you discovered that when God saves you, when Jesus saves you, he gives you a divine purpose in your life? And part of that purpose is that you and I, that each and every one of us, we would experience great blessing for him so that we could be able to have the resources to do what God has called us to do. That's why we work so hard, isn't it? That's why in everything we do, we do it with such diligence. And, and such focus and such passion within our life because we realize this, that we're not working just for ourselves. but how many know we're working for the glory of God? How many want your life to glorify the Lord in all that you do? That's why we work hard. That's why we plow. That's why we labor because this is God's desire and his desire is to bless his people. Now we know that God does promise to bless our life. That scripture that I read to you, that he increased his people greatly and he made them more powerful than their enemy is a promise that God has placed upon our church. How I many know there are promises in the Bible? There are over 7,000 promises in the Bible. And one of those promises that you can get a hold of is that if you're a part of Victory Outreach, that God is going to increase you. And he's going to make you more powerful than your enemy. I'll tell you, when he increases you, he makes you more powerful than your past. He makes you more powerful than your present. And he makes you more powerful than the future things that are about to come. Somebody get happy about that promise. You're going to be powerful as he blesses you. But we know that in order to be blessed, many times it is contingent upon the conditions that are found in God's word. Listen, brothers and sisters, there are promises, right? We can claim those promises for, for ourselves, but we must recognize for those promises to come into fruition... We must be obedient to the conditions of God's word. The conditions that he lays out in his word. We are all called to walk in obedience. And our obedience always points to trust in God's ability and trust in his record to bless. Here, here's what I want to share with you is that God has the ability to bless you. But God's track record shows that he will bless you. His track record shows his track record is good. He's faithful to his word. He's faithful to those who are obedient to him. How many know God? David says, I've never seen God's children begging for bread. So how many of you can raise your hand or shout if God has been faithful to bless your life? His record is good. His track record shows that he's able to bless us. Now, in the kingdom of God or in the house of God, there's two types of people. There are those who can expect to be blessed. If you're living a life of obedience and you're doing what the word of God commands you to do, guess what? You can walk in expectation of your blessing. You can walk with your head up. You can walk with a skip in your step, a glide in your stride, knowing that you may not have a blessing now, but as you're obedient, your blessing is on its way. Your blessing is about to come. Your blessing is going to come through for you in the right time. But then there are those who miss the blessing of God. They miss the blessing of God because of three things. First thing, number one, is that God, he never blesses a divided life. In Luke 16, he says, you can't serve two masters. Here's my question. Who are you serving this morning? You can't serve God and money at the same time. How many know you've got to have your priorities in order? See, the Lord is looking for someone who will not have a divided life. Secondly, God will not bless a disordered life. He's looking to bless someone that has their priorities in order. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Right? Many of you who study the word recognize that the word righteousness in the scripture means generosity. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, 
then all things shall be added unto you. In other words, what the Lord is saying to us, that if you want to be blessed, you've got to have your priorities in order. God says, if you keep me first in all things, he says, I will open up heaven and I will begin to bless you. I will meet all of your needs and I'll give you some of your wants as well. See, God doesn't bless a divided life. He doesn't bless a disordered life. And then lastly, God will not bless a disobedient life. And I think this is so important. You say, Pastor, I'm looking for that screw. I'm looking for that right bolt in my engine that needs to be turned. Here it is. Be obedient. God is looking for people who will be 100, not 95%, not 85%, not 50% of the time. God is looking for those people that will walk in 100% obedience to experience abundance and increase in their life. He says the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. So many people are being robbed today because they refuse to believe the word of God. He said the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So many Christians are being robbed. Even here this morning, you're being robbed because you refuse to believe the whole counsel of God. You believe some of the word. You believe the parts about healing. You believe the parts about salvation. You believe the parts about joy. And then even you believe the parts about blessing, but you don't believe the parts about what it takes to be blessed. And I got to stop for a moment on a Sunday morning to tell you that God does want to bless you. God does want to increase you. God does want to take your life to another level, but he's looking for somebody that's going to be 100% obedient to his word and if you're ready for the abundant life, who's ready for the abundant life this morning? Come on, who's ready for the abundant life this morning? Then you're ready to walk in obedience. You're ready to walk in obedience. And I'm going to tell you this. In order to be blessed and to walk in obedience, sometimes don't we need to hear testimonies? You know, Jesus said there's two generations. There's those who haven't seen yet believe. But yet there's those who must see to believe who must see to believe. And there's nothing wrong with that. But every now and then, we've got to open up our eyes and we've got to hear a testimony. We've got to, we've got to see how God is blessing his people. And this morning, I felt inspired to call out a few people that I believe are experiencing the powerful blessings of God in their life, the God in their families, God in their business. And I want to call them up. They can take this pulpit here and if they can begin to prepare and I want to call them up this morning. I want to call up Aldo Arguello, Brianna Evangelista, and Jaime Stokey. Give them a good hand here as they make their way this morning. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the abundant life. And I'm going to ask them to maybe you can help them with a chair, brother. You could, that's enough chairs for three people? Okay, bring them all out. All right. Praise God. And I want them to be seated. Go ahead and give them a good hand as they make their way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, and today I'm excited to have them. I've seen how God has blessed each and every one of them individually. And I have a few questions prepared for them this morning. And are you guys ready to, to grow, ready to learn today? I, I think it's so exciting. You know, one of the ministries that we have been stepping out to start here in our church is, is a ministry called our business leaders ministry. And Pastor Aldo and myself and a few other men in our church, we, we've, we've come together to strategize how we can take our people to another level financially and spiritually. And Pastor Aldo, maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the things that are taking place in our business leaders ministry. Well, we're very excited. Uh, this ministry, uh, we actually have been talking about it for a long time. But this year we stepped out. In January we stepped out and we said we you know we need to start this ministry we need to gather the business owners of our church but also uh, create an opportunity for those that also aspire to one day own their own business and our pastor challenged us he got a group of us together and he challenged us to start this ministry and God has been bringing growth uh, there's been a lot of strength a lot of networking take your place as a matter of fact uh every, the first we gather the first two tuesdays of every month and we actually been getting uh, a lot of guests from our city that have been uh coming and wanting to be a part because they see that god's doing some great things and they feel like that's one of the ways that they can connect with our church yeah and there's a there's a real hunger uh one of the things that we're sensing in some of our people is a real hunger 
uh, to begin to grow in the area of finances. Many of the people who get saved in our ministry and get saved in our church, they come in, but they need tools, don't they? And what are some of the different tools? I know we've lined out eight values in our business leaders ministry, and uh, these are all values that are designed to give tools to our people to be able to grow. I know one of our values has to do with values and maturity, right? Maybe you can read it there. Well, we came together uh, last year for about six months. We put some values together because we realized that in order for this ministry to really uh, be built on a strong foundation, we need values. Yeah. And one of the values was to build values, stability, maturity, and balance. And that was one of the values that we instilled within our business ministry, uh, not just to model, uh, you know, uh, having a business, not just to model, um, you know, uh, being out there in, in the marketplace and, and doing the work, but really to model a, a well-rounded life, right? a balanced life. Right. And, you know, that's really one of the keys to continue to model balance, to continue to model maturity, because we realize that God has called us to be the light. Right. And in that in the community, you know, that's what we're that's our one of the tools that God's given us is to preach through our business. Right. One of the things that I also find is that uh, the enemy always has a strategy to take people out. Yes. And um, I've said it before, if the enemy can't take you out with too little, he'll take you out with too much. Right. And one of the things that we have seen in the ministry after doing this for 50 years is that when 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 people start to experience increase in their life, many of them, they no longer have time for God. Have you seen that? Yes, and that's one of the, the biggest things. Uh, you know, that's the test of success. And when the test of success comes, you know, uh, you know that's really where, where the heart is tested. Uh, am I going to continue to be faithful to church? Am I going to continue to be involved? And they go from worshiping the blesser to the blessing right and that's where the bible talks about you know not serving two masters and that's why you know modeling balance and modeling values and modeling stability we felt was one of the strongest keys because especially the men within that group the men on that team that's one of the things the standards that they've lived through their lives is they lived uh, uh, that balanced life. Yeah, and they've set the right example. I think it's so important to understand that when God begins to bless you and increase you financially, that's when people begin to watch you, don't they? That's right. You know, when you didn't have anything, no one knew your name. Come on. No one wanted to talk to you. You know, you didn't have much, but then when God starts blessing you, all of a sudden he makes you, uh, uh, he gives you an image, he gives you uh, influence, he begins to promote you in the eyes of people. And it's at that critical moment where some people set the right example, but then some set the wrong example. And the reason they set the wrong example, they start missing church on Sunday. They start taking jobs on Sunday. They really don't have those values built into their life. And what, one of the things that we're finding, right, Pastor Al, I don't know if Stokey wants to speak into it, is because they don't have those values, they can't sustain the blessing. And then at some point, they begin to lose the blessing. Stokey, what do you see about some of those things? So true, so true, Pastor. Um, it's it, That was a challenge for me in the beginning starting my business because I knew it was going to take the majority of my time. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm a man of God. And without God in my life, I will absolutely have nothing. Mm, that's good. Amen. And in fact, it says he took us from darkness and put us in his marvelous light that my life is rooted and built up in right. Christ. So I, me and my wife, we've discussed, if I'm going to do business, I can't get distracted of what God still, I'm still victory out. Come on, somebody. People, don't get it twisted. It's not a money thing. It's still a kingdom thing. Yes. And it's still, uh, you know, just allowing to be a channel of blessing. Because it, it, All my business did is make me stronger for God. Good. It made me shine brighter for God. My authority, when I talk about Jesus and they look at my life, now it, it, my life speaks volumes. Before yes. I was just a little gangster from the neighborhood. That, yeah, you need Jesus. Keep with Jesus. But now, it, now I have a little bit of prestige. Not that it's about that. <laughs> that's right. And that's not what I'm but in that's it okay, for. Right? But it helps my witness for Jesus. Yes, and absolutely. That's what's exciting. Very, very exciting. And like you said, Stokey, you are Victory Outreach, aren't you? Yeah. 
You were yes. saved in this ministry. And tell me. raised in this That's ministry. right. Tell us how you gave your life to Jesus in about a minute or so. Well, I'm a proud product of the men's home. <laughs> in fact, they couldn't get it. Victory Outreach Elka home yeah. was yeah. my home. Amen. And, um, and I mean, they couldn't get me out of the home. That's right. I, 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 even, I left the home. I called Mike. Do you need help in the home? Can I? No, you need to work, brother. And, and <laughs> but that's where it, well, actually, I actually got saved in county jail. Um, um, Lourdes, I don't know if you know Lourdes. Is she here? Yes. Her son reached me. And um, I wasn't looking for God, but I guess God was looking for me. All right. He literally sent someone in the county jail. Um, to tell me about the Lord, and, and that's where I got saved, but I didn't take a stand for the Lord. Um, I got out, tried to go back to my same lifestyle, the most miserable two weeks of my life. All right. Um, after that, I figured out God was doing so. When in the men's home, that's where God delivered me, right oh, there in the sanctuary, in the men's home. I, God, God showed me. He wiped the that 20 years old. He gave me a new life, so that's where, right there in the men's awesome, home. Awesome, Stokey. That's beautiful. We also have with us Brianna Evangelista. And she is one of our tremendous women leaders in our church. She helps oversee the Women's Bible Encounter, having great success. But Brianna, I know God has blessed you and your family in a great way, but how, how did you come to Christ? How, what was the miracle God did in your life? Well, I'm a, I feel like I'm a product of this vision. My parents were saved in here, so I'm literally born and raised Victory Outreach. Right. I would not be here if it wasn't for Victory Outreach, if it wasn't for my dad going into the Mint Home, restoring his life. And so um, I grew Mint up in this getting a lot of love this morning. Yes. So stick it out because your children are going to be blessed. Yeah. Because you said yes. Amen. And so I grew up in this ministry, but wasn't until the age of 19 years old. It was three weeks before I was going to come out here to San Diego State College. And, you know, I just... I. I was never too bad, but I wasn't, I knew I wasn't right with the Lord. You know, church kids, we, we know when we're right. And so my parents were fasting for me and, and I don't know, they, I, I think they were doing water fast because something just broke in me. And three weeks before I went to church, it was a Wednesday night prayer night and I just gave my life to the Lord. I mean, it, it was a 360 because my plans to be out here pastor was I was going to go, go into a sorority. I was yeah. going to just live the college life and. I don't know, whatever the... I remember you know, that. I remember yeah. you walking in, and at that time, <laughs> I see this girl, I go, who's that? And this is she goes to state, she's from one of our churches, and she's from L.A., and she goes to state. Oh, God, I don't think she's going to make it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the leaders and at that time, you know, and uh, we were not really in the place to work with college students, but today, a lot has changed, and you've been a part of that, and we've seen how God has raised you up, and isn't yeah. it powerful to see what God is able to do? Now, um, we're talking about the abundant life. This is our theme for the entire day. And tonight you're going to be hearing a lot more about it. And then we're going to be having a comedy show. It's going to be great. Uh, Dennis Gaxiola, he's a, he's a well-known comedian. He's been on BET, on you know, all these great shows. He's going to be here tonight. He's also a friend. So you don't want to miss out on that. But we're talking about the abundant life. And I've, I have some questions here that I want to ask you guys this morning. Um, and I'm going to ask Brianna first. Brianna, when did you realize that God had a plan for your finances and at what point did you start focusing in on that plan for your life i realized that it definitely came in with my career the job i've been at the last 10 years i started at the bottom as an intern making zero dollars going in and um just you know giving my best there but then as i continue to serve god and even, you know, come up the steps of in ministry, I felt like God was doing that in my personal life right. as well. It was like an alignment because how many know God gives us the desires of our heart? And so as I was coming up and learning, you know, the things of the Lord and serving and finding my calling, I was also finding my place in my career and what God wanted to do. So as I recognized that, I was like, I need to get serious with the blessing that God has given me. You know, how many of us know that God gives us enough, but it's on us on how we, we can squander it? Or we could be use wisdom with it, and I and I realize that God is blessing me for a purpose, mm. and so I have to make smart decisions starting now, not for the future, but now because the decisions I made, I knew that it was going to set me up for success, not only personally but also spiritually. Amen. Now, so that's powerful. 
Now, how did that happen? Was it in a church service? Were you at a conference? Were you reading a book? Were you reading the Bible? What sparked that in you? Um, I remember specifically what sparked that in me. It was women's retreat, and it was uh, it was a, I was speaking. It was Sister Thalia, and she was just talking about her time when she was in college, and she got her career going, but she knew she was called. And I felt in that place, too, where sometimes I felt like, I know I'm called, but I also know that God wants to use my life. Like Pastor talked about the seven mountains of influence. And so as I was trying to align everything, I remember God just said, if you just trust me and you, you give your life over to me, I will establish every plans that you have. Mm. And so I believe as I let go of that, that night, I even put myself in the discipleship home. I left my dorm. I, wow. you know, I, I let go of jobs that were take, pulling me away. Cause you know, in college you work like little odd jobs. I was working like Jamba Juice. I worked at a pizza place and you know, just cause I, I, I like nice things. So I was working hard but I knew that it was taking me away from like life group it was taking me away from when we had all night prayer and we had meetings and I was like oh I'm at work and I knew I can't let that take me away I can't let it take my time away and so I knew if I trusted God he was gonna align it powerful Stokey I have the same question for you you know um, when did you realize that God his plan for you was not just to grow you in prayer or to grow you in his word. But it seems like almost like by default, God also had a plan for your finances. And at what point in your walk with God did you really start focusing in on that financial plan? I think you nailed it by default. He, he, um, I kind of really didn't realize, but I think that when I realized is when I got out of the home, got a job, because I, I, I never had a job before I went to the home telling you this ministry literally raised me um got out got a job all i wanted to do i was so happy god saved me all i wanted to do pastor was ministry i right. just wanted to do ministry i went to new york i i wanted to live that i'm just gonna die for jesus yeah you know? <laughs> I, that's just where i was in my life i was glad to be saved and, and then but when I realized God wanted to bless my finances is when I started doing ministry because I would always come across my finance. I had conferences I would go to. I was working, you know, my eight hours. There was a need for finance. There was a need. There was a need. And I'd like to say I realized it out of, you know, inspiration, but it was frustration. I was frustrated because I'd go out and, you know, I'd go to the conference not only am I spending money to go, but I'd come back and then I missed a week of work and I'd be broke and right. I'd be borrowing. Right. And my God, when I found out that I was not, I was the lender and God wanted me to be the lender and not the borrower, that's, I really started focusing on. on my finances because that finances were going to be a part of, mm -hmm. it was going to empower me to do what God has called me to do. I don't want to be the broke guy telling people that Jesus can bless Come me. on. <laughs> I, I wanted to be blessed and say, God, come on. I know how to get the blessings. And um, so that's when, that's when I really and, and And just to continue on that, maybe uh, for Bree or, or for you as well, I'll just go right back to you, Stokey. Work plays a powerful component, but just because you're working doesn't mean you can't do ministry, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Maybe, Bree, you could talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah, work plays a powerful part because it's your resource, right? We, we pray for resources. We pray, God, how can I be a better blessing? How could I be a pillar? And God will present jobs in your way or present you ideas, and you have to recognize that, that this is a God thing. This isn't just a me thing. This is me just not, you know, bless me, bless me. But what am I going to do with this resource? Now I have influence. Now I could be a bridge or a liaison. And so working that, but also having the favor of God with you and, the, and being sensitive to that in my job, I felt like the only reason I was able to go from the zero intern now up uh, into my position where I'm at, it, it, it took many years, but it also took my character, right? Of how I was not only just on a Sunday and a Wednesday night, but a Monday through Saturday, you know, um, of being uh, time management, um, how, uh, how, I, how I worked when my manager wasn't looking or, you know, uh, projects I was on and, and being diligent in that and also being consistent. I think behind you, they're showing pictures of a house that you're building. Yes. 
Yes, so this year um, we stepped out and me and my husband, we have been dreaming this since the time we got married. Um, we always wanted to build a house in San Diego, um, not in like Tijuana or anything. Cause you know, the economy, we're like, we're never gonna be able to build a house. Everyone just goes to TJ. We're like, no, the Lord knows our heart and we want to be in San Diego. And Who's that guy? <laughs> That's my husband. What's and his that's name? Levi. That's Marky over there, the singer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The worship leader. The singer. He's the singer. <laughs> and God has just, you know, taken the roof off. Taken the roof off and there is no limits. There is no limits when you trust God and, and realize that I'm a resource. Yes. I'm a channel of blessing. I'm a bridge. I remember um, Pastor Sam would always say in the youth ministry, you could walk on my back so you could go higher. Yeah. And I feel like I have that same spirit now. Like you walk on my back so you go higher. Yes. Not only for my family and the leadership, but for the church people, for, for you, for your legacy. And then it trickles down. Yeah. Amen. What's great about building a house too is it gives you equity and it begins to grow and possibly even buy other homes. That's powerful. Yes. But Pastor Aldo, you, you're, you're on our staff full time and you also run a business. I mean, talk a little bit about how you can still work and still do ministry. You know, when I came to San Diego uh, 12 years ago, um, you know, that was the goal. And I, I said it from the beginning. I said, you know, I'm not going to let nothing stop me, to, stop me from fulfilling God's call on my life. And, you know, I set some goals. And, you know, within just a matter of a few years, God began to accomplish those goals. And one of those goals was to be self-sufficient and to have my own business and to be able to continue to be full-time here at the office. And, you know, God began to open doors. And I really believe, you know, when we have a plan mm -hmm. and when we present this plan, you know, we want to continue to keep God in the middle of that plan. But we also want to ask God, God, you know, is there purpose behind this plan? And I believe that's why those goals were accomplished, you know, so quickly uh, within just a short amount of time because, you know, because of the motive. Right. And because, I, you know, I determined in my heart, I'm not going to let nothing sway or take me away from God's plan for my life. It seems and, like you set your plans before the Lord, yes. didn't you? Yes. And whatever you felt that God was calling you to do to work and do ministry, sounds to me that you set your plans before the Lord. That's right. And it seems like the Lord blessed those plans because you were praying according to his will. That's yes. what it sounds like to me. Um, and I think it is possible. I think a lot of times we have the mentality that says, well, I can't do ministry because I work. I can't run a Bible study because I work. I can't lead a group because I work. Well, guess what, guys? Everybody works. <laughs> Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. So everybody works. But one of the things I think in the ministry side of it is that why do we do ministry is because ministry is our joy, isn't it? Yes. Isn't there a joy that comes out of doing ministry, Stokey? Definitely. This is what um, gives me significance, sort of like a reason to get up. And, uh, you know, it's like my business, my business just creates a platform mm -hmm. to enhance this. This was my, when I went to start my business, this was my goal. This is what God showed me. If you build this, yeah, I'll bless this. Powerful. And so it, it's so exciting, man. Pastor, it seems like there's like hidden entrepreneurs in the church. Oh, I've seen that, people light up. Light up. People it are seems lighting like up. people are lighting up. And, and, and um, I don't know if it's right, if I'm in a place to say this, but I really feel God is really positioning our people we got a world to reach yes. right? right and my god are we serious about it the leaders are serious about yeah. it and i just really feel god really positioning his people yeah. to really outpour his blessings that god's going to bless us with business but it's not going to take us away from ministry it's going to strengthen our ministry yes strengthen and make our us ministry. more powerful yes absolutely and that's what I talk about. God always blesses us in proportion to our vision. He's given us a big vision, a global vision. But a lot of times it's in the house of God where we learn the principles of growth, isn't it? And that leads me to my next question. And as you saw those slides, that was also Stokey's business and Pastor Aldo's business as well that they're building. Um, what are some key principles, key principles to achieving financial increase in your life? So we know we have to work. But let me know there's more. 
And maybe, uh, Brianna, you can talk a little bit about what are some of these key principles to achieving financial increase in your life? I would definitely say when I think about that, it, it's not an emotional thing. You know, when we're giving, it's not an emotional thing, even when you're going into work, right? Some of us, it's raining. Oh, I'm going to stay in from church. I'm, I, oh, I don't want to drive out there to work. You have to be consistent. It's consistency. It's hard work. It's good ethic. It's, it's time management, not only here in, in, in what we're doing in, in the call of God, but it's, it's yeah. every day, every hour in our home, that balanced life. So key, you know, when you go into work, do you light up? Do you share about Christ? Does your life speak volumes more than your words? Good. You know, and that's a conviction that me and my husband, we try to live by that. We're not over here just, you know, standing on our desk and preaching the good gospel, but that what we're doing behind closed leads when no one's looking, how we're making decisions, you know, the words that we use, are we speaking life? Are we, are we uplifting or are we tearing down? So you're talking about consistency, but consistency where? I mean, they're already consistent at work. But what about church? Yes, definitely in church, right? How many know when storms come or we get busy? I was talking to my husband this week because we're doing the financial success class tonight. And we were just talking about some of the things that had come our way that we we had to push aside. Um, I believe it was the end of last year, the beginning of this year. Um, my husband was asked to go and do a project and it was out of state. And they told him, you know, we're going to pay you this X amount of dollars. It was like a $5,000 signing bonus if you go for one month I believe is in Wyoming and we're like the pledge like in my head I'm like oh my gosh the pledge just kicked off and how many of us right away we think oh this must be the Lord right but right away my husband's like no this does not align up in my calling I cannot be out Brianna for six weeks you know and and he said no to that and even though yes it looked like a blessing in disguise but it would have took him away of his calling it would took him away from the home life of what we're doing here and what we're building here so like I said it goes hand in hand it's not just the work thing and it's not just a church thing but when you're walking in the, in the blessings of God and you're walking in that abundance and that provision it lines up for you where you're not trying to kick down doors or make things happen but God aligns yeah. it when we're aligned in his word absolutely and it, powerful I think so many people hear something like this and, and in the moment when I hear from you guys they hear things like this and they think oh that's just them trying to get me to be consistent in church and it's a ploy. And the truth is, is that's the way people think. But the truth is, I think people don't really understand that church consistency is where everything begins. Yeah. Blessing begins. Because it's not just about you coming to church. It's about people coming to hear the wisdom. Yeah. To receive the direction from God's word that all this fruit springs out of. Yeah. And even in the, in the scenario that you shared, uh, which I'm very familiar with that, and there's been multiple offers, but there's convictions in some people in our church that they will not miss church. They say, I will not miss church primarily because that's where the word of God is being preached, and it's the word of God that gives me the keys to the kingdom. And so I think so many people underestimate that. They underestimate that. They say, well, I'm going to watch church on YouTube, and I'm going to listen to this preacher, but you got to understand that when you come to your church, the direction that's begin, being given from the pulpit of your church is specific to your life. Yeah. Yeah. If I listen to, and there's a lot of great preachers out there, I'll listen to Franklin, I'll listen to different preachers, Fertick, all these different people, and that's great, but you gotta remember, they're speaking to their churches. Yeah. Yeah. And they're ministering words that are directed to the lives of their churches and where their people are going, but to neglect attending your church, you're not receiving the collective wisdom that's specific to your life. So I think a lot of people, if before they can get to the abundant life, they've got to get consistent in church. Yeah, so Who agrees with that? Yeah. And when you're consistent in church and not making the excuse, well, I'm watching on YouTube, or I'm watching this preacher, I'm going over here, I'm visiting my family members, church, that's all fine and good, but you're missing the direction that God has for your life in your church. And so I think that's one key. What's another principle, uh, Stokey, that people can get to the next get to the next level uh, oh, financially question, well the question is have you, uh, what are some key principles to achieving financial increase in your life key principles um well first tithing i think is a right. key non-negotiable um principle but i i come from a long line of hard workers as well so i i knew that if i wanted my seed if i came and i sowed seed every sunday and I wanted that seed to work. 
I couldn't show up to work and be lazy. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't show up late. You know, I, I had to work hard. Right. So um, tithing and hard work um, was, I think, a principle that really helped achieve financial. Yeah, absolutely. Tithing, that's the key. And uh, there's a lot of people that say they tithe. They say they tithe and they do tithe. In fact, this year, uh, we have 330 new tithers in our church. 330 new tithers. And we're praying that they will be consistent and continue to grow and continue to help, uh, uh, you know, experience the great blessing in life, but also see this vision come to pass. I mean, we're believing for more families to get saved, and we're believing for more people to come to Christ and to build the kingdom of God here in our city. And so tithing is one important thing. Um, but Pastor Aldo, what are some other things that are important, some other principles that are important to experience increase financially? Well, I, I think just hearing, you know, from everyone, um, you know, at the end of the day, godly people, they want to be around God's people. And, you know, that's really what has helped me, is being around God's people, uh, being around my pastor, you know, being around... Uh, those that you know that I look that I look up to being around those that you know because when you're in God's house and you're with God's people you know the Bible says that's where wisdom is you know in the council of many that's where wisdom is manifested and that's really what has helped me being around God's people being around uh, my leaders you know that has really been one of the areas that has really helped me and challenged me even looking at the life of our some of our ministers you know, it's really helped me think at another level and think at a greater level because, you know, you know, we have we have one of the best leaders. We have one of the best pastors within our church. And this was all birth, you know, from from his heart. And this was all birth from, you know, and, and that's what that's what has really helped me being around God's people. Amen. Really I think it's me. powerful. You know, um, I did a teaching some years ago and, you know, people forget teaching. You got to kind of keep doing it sometimes bring back old messages but i talked about how uh tithing sets a foundation but in order to get into the future the only thing that can get you into the future is stretching and sacrificing you know you could be here and say well i'm a tither pastor and praise god and, but i'm not growing i can guarantee you that the reason you're not growing is because you're not stretching yourself and you're not sacrificing certain things within your life I've learned that if I want to get into the future, I have to stretch. And even in getting around people that are going to grow you, sometimes we don't want to get around those people because those people stretch us. They challenge us in areas that we're not comfortable. Somehow just their life, being around them, sometimes just being around their work ethic, being around their conversation, being around their mentality. I could tell you right now, every time I get around Pastor Sonny, I am stretched just in the conversation, just in the world that he functions in, just in the pace of his life, just in the decision pressure, just being around him stretches me. And when I leave his presence, I realize these are areas where I need to grow. If I just hang out with a certain group of people all the time, I can guarantee you that that's a comfort zone for me because those people are talking about what I wanna talk about, they're doing what I wanna do, they're, they're not challenging themselves, it's a comfort zone. So in order to grow, I've got to get out of that comfort zone and I've got to get around people that are talking about things I need, doing things that I need to learn how to do and have a different language. Just hearing these people talk, I'm sure there's some of you here today that you're hearing things you've never heard before. You're being challenged in areas, even just on the church attendance thing. You're like, wow, man, I got to get faithful to church. Because when you realize and you really look at your life, you will find that there are many unfinished projects in your life. Things you've started that you've never completed. Projects you gave yourself to that you never followed through on. And we can never grow if we don't stretch. How many can say amen? How many want to stretch? How many want to grow? How many? This is, listen, this has to be more than just information. This can't just be you coming in, coming in tonight, getting a handout, being, oh, that's good. No, no, no. How many know we've got to do something with the information? And so I feel like stretching and stepping out in these areas is very important. Um, and so as we bring it to a close today, um, you know, 
to you, and, and maybe we're answering this question, it's Abundant Life Sunday. Um, we'll start out with, with, with Stokey. Um, what is the abundant life to you? What, in, in, in your own words, we're talking about Abundant Life Sunday. What is that to you? Um, well, the abundant life, Jesus talked about it, um, and he told the disciples that that's the reason he came. He came, first of all, to give us life, and I experienced that um, in the men's home 23 years yes. ago. God gave me new life. And, um, but, you know, the world I came from created a mentality and a way of thinking and, you know, I come from a blue-collar family and a family that literally, you know, wait, live check by check. And that was just, to me, success was getting a good job. That Literally, I just wanted to, if I had a job at the city, if the city ever hired me, I'd probably still be there. Yeah. Um, that was success to me. Um, but it wasn't... Um, I'm sorry, with the question. What is the abundant life? The abundant life. Um, so the abundant life to me wasn't just, it's not just finances. It's the totality of my spiritual life, being strong. It's um, my physical life as well. I just been went through a big old thing of trying to get healthy because I've learned that health is wealth yes. as well. Because if I, I mean, I can have all the money in the world, but if I'm in a hospital bed, I ain't going to do nothing. That's right. Um, so I, I think just everything, Pastor, the abundant life is um, just um, allowing God to flow through me. And with that, if focusing on my spiritual life, um, being in the house of God, I'll tell you, the blessings just follow you. Money will come. Money will come. I'm not even a homeowner. I ain't even worried about that. But if I can just be abundant for God and be faithful to God, continue to give and let God use me, I know that um, God will provide. Man, praise God. Brianna. Pastor, I would say this, what I'm doing right here is the abundant life. Amen. Things that when we were in um, debt and going through our journey and feel like, man, we're never going to have financial freedom. You know, um, I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to lead a life group or, you know, I don't ever know if I'll, you know, have a family, but it's all of that. The, the, it's so much more than money. It, it's having that healthy marriage. It's, it's yes. being fulfilled. It's walking in your calling. It's, it's waking up with the joy and a peace inside of you to say that, God, ultimately, you are my blesser, and this is just temporary. Yes. And what we're building is it, 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 it's going to last long after us. And we're building a spiritual inheritance. It's well rounded. You know, it's when, when you go home and you're playing with your children, and you're able to have your family over, and, and that love is flowing, and that peace, yeah. and you're walking in that security to know that God's got me through every season, through trial, through sickness, through. You know, whatever, if you're on the mountaintop or the valley, that God's got you and you're living an abundant life that's far greater than you can ever imagine. That's the abundant life. Awesome. Amen. Beautiful. Pastor Aldo. You know, I, I think about the, the abundant life and, you know, it's everything that has been shared. And, you know, when you look at the ministry of Jesus, it's really at the end of the day, it's having fruit in every area. There it is. The last message that he spoke with his disciples before the cross was about fruitfulness and there's different types of fruitfulness so in other words you know we're not just limited to just having fruit in one area good like if our finances are growing everything else is good you know sometimes it's not but you know if, if there's fruitfulness in the area of our finances and fruitfulness in the area of our position at work and fruitfulness in the area of our calling and fruitfulness in the area of our family and fruitfulness in our witness mm. and fruitfulness through our character on, and brother. fruitfulness in our relationship with God and fruitfulness in all those areas that is the abundant life wow you just preached my sermon you stole my thunder <laughs> he just stole my clothes <laughs> because you know in this world and even in church here's one of the things that we hear a lot we hear about balance, don't we? You got to have a balance. And it's true. But I was reading a, a business book, actually a secular business book this year. And he said something very heavy. And he's a, he has 
godly roots, this business owner. And he says, I'm not looking for the balanced life. He said, I'm looking for abundance in every area of my life. And it spoke to me because it really is true that when Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly, he was talking about having abundance in every area of our life. Do you know it's possible to have abundance in every area of your life? But the one thing I come to realize is this, is we cannot experience the abundant life without the blessing of God in our life. And in order to access the blessing of God, what does he say? Be obedient. Keep me first in every area of your life. Keep me first in your prayer life. Keep me first in your marriage. Keep me first in your family life. Keep me first in your business. Hey, you know what? Keep me first in your ministry. Keep me first in every area of your life. And when I'm first, I will bless that area with my power. And how many of you here today would like to see God's power flowing in every area of your life and in your finances? That's really what it is. It, it's plugging into his power. So the Lord tells us this way, very simply, if you want to experience financial blessing, you've got to plug into my power in that area. And the way to do that is to make a commitment to the tithe. In Malachi, he says, bring the whole tithe, right? Malachi 3.10. And I will rebuke the devourer. How many know that's power? To rebuke the devourer, right? And then to also open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that you would not be able to contain. I do realize that many of you have already laid that foundation. You're already experiencing a rebuke devourer in your life. Yet there's some here that you struggle. You struggle mightily in this area of money. You've accepted financial frustration. You've literally accepted that. That's a reality with some people. They say, oh, well, pastor, you know, I believe that God can bless people, but that's not for me. God doesn't want to bless me. I believe that God can do all these things, but for me, well, I don't really believe that way, or I don't know if God can do it for me. And, and I want to tell you, if, if you talk like that and you think like that, what you've actually done is you've opened up a door for the enemy to come in and to steal, kill, and destroy that area of your life. And if I can do anything this morning is we want to shut that door to the enemy. We declare financial increase over you. We declare it. We prophesy financial increase we rebuke the devourer in your life and all you have to do is this make a commitment to tithe this morning say for the rest of this year pastor and there's not much of the year left i'm going to commit to bring the full tenth of my increase to the house of god not eight percent now hear me hear me hear me hear me hear me not 8%. That's not a tie. Say, that's not a tie. Not 9.9%. .9%. What does the Bible say? How much percent? 10%. That's a tie. That's a holy tie. Now the power of God is activated in your finances. And you could stand on the word, as many of you have, that the devourer has been rebuked. If you're one of those 330 people that made a commitment to tithe this year, do it. Do it every, every week. Do it every month. Do it. And that's the scripture where the Lord says, test me in this. And I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you that as you start tithing, I want you to stop me, as many do. Pastor, I've been tithing and God has been good. I want to hear your testimony. Maybe the next time we do this, you'll be up here sharing what God has done for you and how God has blessed your life. So do it. Keep on doing it. Make a commitment. Make that commitment today. Download that application. Put it up there, guys. Download that application, the Victor Outreach San Diego application. Put it on up there. 
Start giving online. Give with your envelope. Now, if you're already a tither, you're already a tither. Continue to tithe. But then ask yourself this question today. And hear me and hear me clear. Hear me clear. As, am I experiencing abundance in every area of my life? You see, I'm a tither, pastor. That's automatic. That belongs to God. I don't even give that to you. I give that to God. Okay, good. But ask yourself this question. Am I experiencing abundance in every area of my life? How's my marriage? How's my children at home? Do they love God? Do they fear God? Do they lift the testimony of my family? How do I conduct business? How is my health? Am I serving in the ministry? Or have I allowed my job to take precedence or my hobbies or my projects to take me out of a consistent, faithful ministry or a consistent impact in my community? Am I experiencing the joy that comes with ministry, the joy that comes with serving God, the joy that comes with doing His will? Am I experiencing abundance in every area of my life? I'm a tither, Pastor, but I'm, I, I don't have abundance here. I don't have abundance here, and I don't have abundance here, and I need to make changes. Well, the first thing is keep on giving. Keep on putting God first in your finances, but then there's going to be some changes that you need to make. There's always changes that need to be made in our lives so that we can keep growing and stay alive. I think part of having an abundant life, brothers and sisters, is this. Can I stand tall as an example to a dying community? Can I stand tall as an example to a dying community? That when people speak of me, can they say, there's an example for Christ. There's an example of how God is able to bless somebody. There's an example of a marriage that glorifies God. There's an example of a young person that is fully committed to God. To me, that's part of abundance. And I'm believing this in our church because I'm going to tell you, I, I've told our team and I'll tell you like I've been telling my team, I'm not satisfied with a shallow church. I'm not satisfied with a shallow church. I'm not satisfied with a packed out church where only the first three rows are living for God. We can do that. Oh, we can do that. That's not hard. Just have a famous preacher come, a famous singer come. Everybody wants to be in the hype. That's not difficult at all. But I know the power of God to change a life. I know the power of the Holy Spirit to transform a heart. I know the power, the real power of God that could take you from darkness and bring you into light and take you from having no purpose to giving you a powerful purpose in the kingdom of God. Who knows that power? I don't want an ordinary church. I don't want it. I don't want to pastor an ordinary church. I want to pastor a church where the people that sit in the back row are just as godly as the people that sit in the front row. That's what I want. How many want to be a part of a church like that? That's Victory Outreach. I mean, no, that's Victory Outreach. I'm not saying you gotta be perfect, but God always knows the hearts that are striving. Man may not know, but God sees the heart. And he's looking for people that will strive to grow in that area. I've determined in my heart, Lord, when I die, I want it all to go to you. I want it all to go to you. So where are you at this morning? What's your commitment level this morning? If you need a tithing envelope or a United We Can envelope, I want you to lift up your hand this morning. Or if you have your phone, you can give by way of phone. But I want you to give the whole 10 today. Everyone say 10%. 10% for God. 10%. I'm also so grateful for those of you that made a pledge and completed it. 
completed that pledge. You made a vow to God, vow to his house. You completed it. Thank God for you. Thank God for your sacrifice, your stretching, your belief that we're going to build a 1,200-seat auditorium for the glory of God. And we're going to impact our city in a powerful way. Thank you for believing. As you prepare your giving, I want the music team to come. And they're going to minister in song. And then we're going to... God bless you. You can pass the basket. <laughs>